hey, raptors have feet. Why do we care? Two reasons. A, they can turn us into a pincushion, artistically unsatisfying. B, their feet get grotty. Now, why do we care about grotty feet? Well, we're gonna talk about that and we're gonna talk about what we do about it right now. What do you think, Mo? A little bit of walking, a little bit of screen therapy, a little bit of ab sailing off my glove. Pretty complete day, huh? What do you think? <laughs> I don't think most feel it. Right. So, Chiraco and Mojave are going to give me a hand today. Well, a foot today. Um, so that I can compare and contrast different size talons for you as we demonstrate proper technique for cleaning their feet. Now, typically what we do is we use a toothbrush and today I'm going to be using some Hibitane soap. Now, this is veterinary grade antiseptic soap. Most vet clinics will sell you this and that's exactly where I got mine from uh, the local vet clinic in 100 Mile House. Now, just a quick note. Always make sure to keep this away from eyes, ears, nose, mouth. It's really powerful. It can make any animal really, really sick. So always be really careful in that, in that regard. So all you need of the Hibitane soap, and incidentally, I should mention, Hibitane is what they are washing your pet down with before they paint them all up with betadine, which is liquid iodine, and do a surgery, whatever the, that surgery is. So this cleans the surface. Betadine makes sure it's all an antiseptic, bug-free field so that the veterinarian can crack on and do whatever he or she needs to do for your pet. So this is how great this stuff is. Like I say, I use it interchangeably with Dr. Bronner's soap, which we've talked about before. And today I just thought because we're going to do a really good clean, I want to get a good antiseptic uh, result from washing their feet today. Right. So a couple of things that we want to be aware of. You'll probably remember me talking about Bumblefoot some time ago, and we'll revisit that topic in detail in, in the days ahead. But Bumblefoot, of course, is a 100% avoidable situation for our feathered companion. We don't see it in wild birds of prey. We see pox, we see frounce, we see all those kinds of nasty things in wild birds of prey that come into rehab center, but we don't see Bumblefoot. And the reason why is they're standing on perching surfaces, they're interacting with the natural environment in a way that keeps their, the bottom of their feet stimulated and healthy. That's our job when we have a bird of prey under stewardship. So that's why we're doing this. And it's a good habit if you can, it's not always possible, at least a couple of times a month, ideally once a week. Some people do it more than that, some people don't do it at all, and that drives me absolutely bonkers. Okay, even more bonkers than I already am. So, what we're going to be looking for as we're cleaning their feet is we're looking for self-inflicted injuries, things that they've done to their toes with their own talons. And we're making sure to pay special attention to those areas, including scraping off the, the top of the little scabs. We're looking at the bottom of the feet, once we get them all nice and clean to make sure we don't have pressure sores at the beginning of Bumblefoot, anything that looks like it shouldn't be there. We're being vigilant for that kind of thing. All right, so 
let's get started. Oh, and I, I have him hooded because he's really ticklish. And if he sees the toothbrush coming for his feet, I mean, it's gonna be a gong show. So we're not going there, all right? Right, so I've put enough Hibitane soap in the hot water to cover, say, a 25 cent piece. I think many of you will be familiar enough with a Canadian or even an American 25 cent piece to know how much space you want dotted on the bottom of your little glass um, bowl that you're using. So, a couple things to keep in mind. First of all, yeah, you see what I mean about how ticklish she is. What we want to do is we want to go in the direction of the little scales on the top of his toes. Okay. So we can see that the scales run this way and I want to run sideways to those scales because I want to get into all the little crenellations, all the little spaces where guck gets in there. And you can see his feet are kind of grotty. They're dirt and muck and leftover lunch from yesterday and probably the day before. I know that tickles. I know it tickles. I know it tickles. But it's not going to hurt you, I promise. And so, like I say, I'm going to go sideways. I'm going to get them all sort of scrubbed down, and then I, I'm going to cycle back again, right? This isn't something that you speed your way through. You take as much time as you need to do a good job. I mean, it's like my nanny used to say to me when I was a kid all the time, if job's worth doing, it's worth doing right. And I can't get that soundtrack out of my head. So if you're going to do this, make yourself comfortable and spend the time. Right. So now... We're starting to get somewhere. We're starting to lift all that dirt off. You can see there's already a difference in that toe. Now I can see where he's caught himself. I can see where he's caught himself at some point right on the top of that scale there. So I'm just going to scrape that off with my fingernail. All right. You're dingling. Yes, you are. All right. Working my way across. It's the thing that we women know about men everywhere on earth, isn't it, ladies? Men are ticklish, their feet particularly. That's how nature built in a, a sort of a backstop for us to be able to control them. <laughs> okay, so. And you can see his little toes are long and gangly, right? Long and gangly, very flexible. The knuckles rotate freely. This helps them when they are attacking their quarry in the air at high speed, particularly when they're stooping on them. Because when you think about it, and they're putting all that momentum into the moment of impact, they, they have to have a way to absorb all that recoil that's coming back into them from hitting the duck, hitting the pheasant, hitting whatever, right, in the air. I'm just concentrating on the top for now. I'm going to get underneath the talons in just a minute here. You are so silly. Yes, you are. Right, so with the helix toe, it gets a little tricky because we're dealing with anklets and bells and jesses and all that kind of sort of stuff. So we go down either side and then turn them away from you about 90 degrees. Come on, get up here, pipe partner. And then sideways, just like we did on the front of the toes. Okay. Good job, partner. Good job. Okay. Now, when we get the underneath, we actually want them to give us a hand. Well, a foot, as it were. Uh, and grab the thing, because that actually helps us to clean their feet. do the middle of, yeah, there we go, almost grabbed it there, middle of his foot, getting right underneath there, and you're using about the same pressure that you're using when you're brushing your own teeth. We don't need to get in there and just grind away, that's, that's going to hurt them, right? But we do need to be putting in enough pressure that we're getting into all those little crenellations, all the bits and pieces that can potentially hold some nastiness. Right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way out toward the front of each toe from the middle. Right? 
Now he's starting to settle down. This is He's starting to figure out, you know, this isn't so bad, really. Now look at what I'm doing here from the inside of the talon, guys. You see, I'm working to the same curvature, right? Moving the toothbrush back and forth underneath the toe. Right? There we go. Good lad. Good lad. Right? And then I'm going to do that with his four talon. Same thing. Moving along. First one way, then the other. Oh, I know that tickles, kiddo. I know. <laughs> you want me to do that, do that one a little bit more? Okay. All right. All right. And I'm just getting right underneath there. Let that toothbrush do the job. You get a lot of nastiness back there. And that's where some problems start. Okay, so now the outermost toe, which tends to be a little ticklish on this guy. And again, working to the curvature of the talon. All right, and moving back and forth sideways as well. Okay, now. Getting the hallux can be a little tricky. Just be patient. Work it in there. Turn, turn, them, turn them sideways to yourself. That helps, right? And it also means that you can see what you're doing. Right? Now, first things first. What I want to do is lift the talon like so. I want to lift and look underneath at his foot. See, he's got a hold of my finger, but he hasn't got a hold of my finger, if you see what I mean. Right? And if you come in and you look underneath the, under, underneath that foot, you see it's all beautiful and pa baby pink and clean and healthy. Right? There's nothing going on in there that I should be concerned about. No dried patches, nothing that looks like blistering starting or anything black and nasty. Right? Now, if you want to come on in, take a, a good look at this. The thing that you need to do, and it's a little tough for me because I keep my fingernails so, so uh, short, is you want to get under the cuticle on their talons. And if this guy will cooperate with me, you can see, you just peel that away with your nail. Now why am I doing this? Okay, getting back to the issue of bumblefoot, food can migrate underneath this skin. And it can get underneath, and it can lodge, and it can rot. And once you've got rot happening in there, you've got a problem. So if I'm making sure I'm cleaning out any residual food or dead skin or anything like that, I'm closing the door to anything getting up underneath there. And so this is that thing, guys. When you've got them up on the glove every day, look at their feet. Are you seeing anything in here? Does it look irritated, you know, inflamed, red, oozy? Anything that doesn't look like it should be there, probably shouldn't be there. Yeah, I know that tickles kill. <laughs> Don't be cheeky. Come on. Don't be cheeky. So we're going to do this with all of his toes. It's a little tricky with the hallux toe. The skin is dead. It's not pulling on him. It's not hurting him in any way. All right. And then it's just about maneuvering around. Sometimes you kind of got to do this a little bit by feel. You take a look, you do it by feel. Come on, Purr. Come on. I know it tickles. I know. Right. This also gets them used to you touching their feet. I know you're ticklish. So this gets them used to you touching their feet having your hands around their feet and and ideally what you want them to inculcate is you know it's really impolite for me to foot you because it really is impolite for them to foot us right so we've done that foot and you notice I did the one furthest away from me first so now what I want to do is shampoo rinse repeat on his right foot 
Think of it this way, partner. You're having a spa day, right? Women all over the world pay a lot of money to have pedicures. There we go. And if they'll grab it for you, then you just shove the toothbrush under their foot, right? Just shove it on under there. Even if you're not at that place yet. What the hell? Let's just, just use what we've got, right? I should also mention, don't be shy about getting up into this area right here, right where the toes meet the foot. That's, a, again, a very sensitive area. Be careful. Don't be in there with too much force with the toothbrush. All right. Now pretty soon, pretty soon I'm going to start seeing the molt starting to happen with these guys. And right around the same time when the molt happens, you start to see them shedding scales from the top of their toes. If they're really loose, after you've cleaned them all up, just take the edge of your th fingernail, your thumbnail, and just gently lift them up and out of the way. It's not going to hurt them. Actually gives them a bit of a hand. Or a foot, as the case may be. All right. You are so ticklish. Why do you scratch your nose when I tickle your feet? <laughs> All right. I'm trying to get up onto sort of above what would be the equivalent of, our, of the instep of our foot. Right? Just underneath the anklet. And again, it tickles. Just be patient. Just talk to them. It's fun. It's light. Nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> you are cheeky. All right. So going for the helix tone in. to lift it up and do a little bit of negotiating with him to get this side. <laughs> Not make it easier on me, are you, partner? Okay. All right, get underneath his foot, let him grab it. See how he's grabbing it? He's helping me out here. He's going to be having mixed emotions right now. It's like, well, I want it to stop, but it just keeps going, tickling the bottom of my foot here. Now, if he puts his mouth on that, it's going to taste pretty bad. It's not going to kill him. He's not going to get enough to make, you know, to, to injure him. But, you know, if he, if he did get a serious mouthful of it, it, it could make him a little sick, right? So ideally, if we, we don't want them doing that kind of thing. Good job, partner. Good job. Good job. See, that's not so bad. That's not so bad. No, it's not. Don't be silly. You are really not making this easy for me, partner. <laughs> All right. I'm going to get this one near me. Ooh, I know that tickles. You know, obviously, you don't want to annoy them. If you've got a great big eagle on your glove, you're also going to be wanting to maybe put your toothbrush securely on a piece of doweling, nice secure doweling or something strong so that you can keep your hand a little further away from their feet if needs be. Right? So there we go, partner. There we go. There we go. There we go. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Okay. You can see a couple of places where he's just sort of caught himself. These are old injuries. There's not even really a scab, it's just sort of like a little indentation on his toe. What I can do is take a little bit of that soap. Just give it an extra little... That's his commentary on what's going on today. Okay, come on, calm down. That's right, okay. 
And you can see that water is pretty grotty. There's a nice milky, sort of clear pink liquid before, and now we've got some serious muck in there. Right? Now, once again, coming in, scraping the cuticle, lifting that dead skin away. And you're being mindful of the signaling that's coming through to you through the glove. You can tell if they're winding up to let you have a, a nice little kiss with their foot. Right? So we're doing that. Settle down for her. Settle down. You're all right. You're all right. You're all right. What do you mean you don't know where I've been? Okay. So he's not making this easy on me. And they probably won't. Some feathered ones are great with getting their feet done. My first peregrine, Miss Rell, loved it. Absolutely loved it. She would let you wash her feet for an hour if you had that kind of time. Loved it. Most of the, the males I've had, in typical fashion, have been quite ticklish. Okay. And again, it's a little tricky getting back there. I've got to kind of eyeball it through his legs. He's holding hands with me here. He doesn't, he hasn't grabbed me. He's got his hallux sort of around my thumb. Now, the last thing I want to do... <laughs> is I want to have a look at underneath that foot. So you can see it's nice and pink and clean and healthy. There's nothing going on in there that shouldn't be there. Take a good look there. You know, get used to having your hands in there. Obviously, be careful about it. Uh, be thoughtful about it. They don't appreciate it when we're ham ham-handed with them. But this is what you want to achieve. You can see He's lovely and clean. There's no residual meat or dirt or anything nasty on there. And I've had a good chance to have a good look at his feet top, bottom, between, underneath the whole nine yards. All right. So now I'm going to go fetch up Mo, who just loves this, and we'll see what it looks like on much bigger toes. Plus, i got to change the water. Okay. Captain Stumpy Toes and I are going to finish off this little session for you. So we've got big, thick toes on buzzards, hawks, eagles, all right? <laughs> and he's kind of going, you know what, I'm really not happy about this. He's gripping that glove. He's letting me know. Not happy about it at all. So I am being mindful about where I am positioning my hand. I'm taking my time putting myself in positions that would make it a little difficult for him to do anything I don't want him to do. And the other thing I can do is I can cinch down on his Jesses just a little bit. It's going to limit his reach. Okay, So he's letting me know, he's gripping, he's going, nah, I don't like this. I'm not happy. And you can see, again, there's little dots like that that indicate where he's caught himself. right? Um, just been from messing about, probably, or they're probably they could even have happened when he was landing up in trees when we were flying a few weeks back. All right, so which we'll be soon able to do again. So what I'm going to do now with this, and when they're when they're signaling to you like this, you got to be respectful. Respectful, right? Right. 800 pounds per square inch of crushing power on those toes. And having been caught by those toes from time to time over the years, it's not something that I intend to experience for fun. So I have to be mindful about what I'm going to get able, what I'm going to be able to accomplish today with him. Uh, I'm certainly not going to be looking underneath his feet. Not with him showing me this kind of attitude today. And I'm also going to do things like I'm holding on to one of his toes while he's holding on to my finger. So, just being very mindful 
really paying attention to the signaling. Again, I can hold on to his toe. I'm not gripping it, but I'm holding it firmly enough that I've got time to get out of the way if I have to. And I can see him looking at my, my fingers like I might reach over there and see if I can have a little snack on you. He is not making this easy for me at all. Yeah, I feel ya. I feel ya. I see you're in a bad mood. Use the gloved hand to shield your ungloved hand. However you need to, right? And you do the best job you can paying attention to the sorts of things that you weren't able to accomplish because if he calms down in a day or two when I try this again and he's in a much better space in his head then I'm probably in better luck right now again I'm gonna come at him from back here because I'm just using my gloved hand to protect myself with I'm not gonna worry about being able to do as thorough a job with him today as I was able to do with Shirako, right? And as long as he's gripping me, it's like a vehicle. It can't be backing up and going forward at the same time. So if he's gripping me, then he can't be grabbing me at the same time. But likewise, I'm not putting my hand any closer to him than I absolutely have to be to at least get a decent job done on his toes. And again, I can come around the back a little bit like this. It's not that he can't fire his leg back, because he certainly can, as many of you who have handled buzzards and hawks know. But it's just a little trickier for him to do that. So I'm just trying to do a half decent job on the top of his foot here, keeping my distance. Watching his body language at the corner of my eye. Listening to all the signaling that's coming through the glove. He's gripping very tightly. So I'm really glad I've got my elk skin glove on today. I'm just going to grab whatever grot that I can see as safely as I can. Okay. And this is actually good that you're getting to see that Mo isn't always in the best of moods. They have their moods. He's letting me know. He's not happy about a bunch of things today. Not the least of which is I'm giving him a pedicure. So in his mind, that's a little bit undignified. Okay, so we can see, looking at his feet, a lot less grotty than they were. They're not as clean as I'd like. But likewise, I don't want to be taking any unnecessary chances. Because I can tell you, the last two times I needed to get a tetanus shot was because I got grabbed by one of my charges. Alright, so it's not as good as I'd like, but it's not bad. We've got the worst of the, gr the grot off of him. I want to really test Providence here. I've got a hold of his toe. I'm going to see if I can get a toothbrush under there just a little bit. This one, I'm going to come at it from the side, watching him the whole time. Yeah, so I'm not going to push my luck any further with this. All right, but once again, we went from nice clear pink liquid to yuck. All right, so this is why ideally, if you can do it at least once a week, get them used to expecting that this is going to happen, that nothing bad happens when, it, when it's going on, they'll often settle down. Now, there's, there's kind of a psych game going on between Mojave and Brian right now. That's part of the reason why he's acting like this on my glove. All right. So, once again, thanks for coming and spending some time with us today. If you liked what you saw, give us a like. Let's subscribe. That would be awesome. I'd love to have some more subscribers come aboard. It's great to make new friends and have some great new conversations started on the channel. Um, questions, comments, right down below. Uh, I love having these conversations with you guys. It's a lot of fun. 
Uh, I'm learning some new things from some other falconers from all over the world and uh, it's lovely that you guys are weighing in because particularly the youngsters and the novices that are just starting their journey in falconry, they're getting to see these conversations and the tips and tricks that you've learned over the years for doing different things. They're really benefiting, I know I am, okay? So I'm gonna put Mr. Um, Mr. Grumpy down on his perch and uh, we'll see you next time guys, thanks again, cheers.